Oh, welcome back, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in. I super appreciate it. This week, we're going to be going into another marathon, the N64 era of gaming. Now, I've stated this time and time again, that it's my favorite era of all gaming. This week, we're going to be looking at Rayman 2, The Great Escape on the N64. Now, Rayman 2 was personally developed as a 2D platformer, just like its predecessor, and it was going to be on the PlayStation 1. Well, eventually, this game did go on the PlayStation 1. It was originally developed for the Nintendo 64 by the excellent company Ubisoft. But is Rayman 2 just as good as I say it is? Let's find out. Here's the intro. <laughs> Our story begins on a dark and stormy night, where a strange voice is narrating that the world's core is weakened, after which we dash to a strange ship where people are being held hostage along with a strange looking creature named Globox. He gets put into the same prison with our hero Rayman, who explains the core and the thousand limbs have been scattered. By this has weakened his powers and they have disappeared. Globox opens his mouth and gives Rayman a silver lump, which grants him the power to shoot his fists again. Rayman uses the fist to escape along with Globox. Upon getting into the huge hole through the ship and speeding down towards the bottom, Rayman stops and Globox speeding down the huge hole slams into Rayman and they both fall to the ascending abyss below. Rayman wakes up to see that he's been separated from his good friend Globox. Oh no. Anyway, Rayman tries to get to the Fairy Glade with the use of the Teensies and the Hall Doors. Rayman makes it to the Fairy Glade and frees Lee. And after Rayman gets through the Fairy Glade, Rayman gets to a few more sections and makes it to the Temple of Ice where he gains a mysterious mask. Afterwards, he meets Polos, who says he needs the four masks to awaken Polos. After which, we cut to a pirate captain named Razorbeard, who is concerned with Rayman's progress and sending several of his crew to kill Rayman, which during during the cutscene made me awfully concerned as he eats on one of the thousand lums I mentioned earlier. Oh well, one less thing I have to collect I guess. But I found this part particularly disturbing. Getting through a couple more levels and getting to Menhir Hills, Rayman finds that his friend named Clark is super sick after eating a pirate. Okay dude, I'm a fat guy myself, but you gotta pace yourself on these things. Rayman is up to the task to save him, and going back to the swamp, Rayman finds a witch doctor to give Rayman an elixir. In doing so, sends Rayman to the Cave of Bad Dreams, my favorite level in the game, but more on that later. Rayman makes it through the Cave of Bad Dreams, including this creepy as fetch slide, geez seriously this gave me freaking nightmares as a kid, and screw this freaking witch doctor dude. After getting through it, Rayman has a choice whether to continue the game or ending the game right here. And I gotta tell you, the bad ending is super funny because Rayman gets his own island and is fatter than me. That's saying something. Rayman chooses to help Clark and gets back to Menar Hills and frees Clark by means of the elixir. Rayman gets to the level to continue on his adventure. Rayman finally reunites with Globox and continues on his adventure again. I like Globox at this scenario. You get to see the true character in his goofy looking rain dance. It's pretty funny. Rayman finds a whale named Carmen the whale who tells of a second mask's location and to break the pirate's motors by means of using her blubber. I mean, I guess. Ew. Rayman gets through the sanctuary of stone and fire and gets the second masks in the game. After getting through a few more levels, Rayman makes it to the precipice and makes it to the sanctuary of rock and lava. The ability to fly up and down and get another mask. Rayman finds Globox's wife, Uglet. The fetch, that's freaking rude and lazy as crap, Ubisoft. Screw yourselves. Rayman gets through and saves all of them, and one of them gives them the fourth mask in the mines. Holy fetch, I gotta say. Globox and Uglet have a ton of freaking kids. Holy cow, man, that's just irresponsible. After getting through the level and getting to the buccaneer where the game first started, Rayman gets to the crow's nest and has to take on the Grogriath, or however you say it. And afterwards, in defeating him, Rayman rides a rocket 
in a lava pit and the final battle begins. Rayman defeats Razorbeard and defeats him and the Buccaneer explodes. No, not really. Luckily, Rayman saved everyone before the ship plummeted to its demise. Anywho, Rayman was possibly not so lucky as they only found his shoe. However, around the corner, Rayman shows up where the game ends and the credits roll. Story-wise, the game is super unique. I really like for this era that the story is way more involved than in other collectathon platformers of this generation, and it's super dark. The bad guy has no regard for the core that the world presents. He basically is sucking the world of life, essentially, and I like that even though most villains like he is, he's super involved as much as he can to take out Rayman. And Rayman is a protagonist. He's actually pretty cool. I don't think he has the characteristics of anybody really special he's kind of like mario in a way just a really cool mario and i have to say glowbox is super kooky and i like him a ton he adds laugh to the world that needs it lee is pretty awesome but it seems like a total of her abilities are just made to actually help rayman it's not like she really does anything in the game and that's kind of the main issue i had with the story i feel like for this particular game and this particular story that the characters rely way too much on Rayman and I think this world relies way too much on Rayman. Dude the guy has no arms and legs dude you're gonna kill his back by the amount of weight you're putting on him jeez. But all in all I have to say the story is really good. With that being said how good is the gameplay? I mean it's just another collectathon platformer so obviously it's probably gonna be the same right? Well, for starters, it's a collectathon platformer. You're tasked to get to the end of each level by going through what looks like a black hole to lead you to the hall of doors. But the catch is you need to collect these yellow things called lums, and they're out in the open. They open more doors as more power goes through the core. Here's the thing unlike something like Banjo Kazooie or heck, even its predecessor, Banjo Tooie, you don't really have to backtrack or go out of your way to find all these things. In fact, I think if you look through each nook and cranny, it's super easy easy to find some of these things. The only real time it makes you backtrack is when you have to go to the Cave of Bad Dreams and I'm okay with that. If the story itself is saying you need to go back to a level, I have no real issue with that. The only time I have an issue is when I have to collect something I didn't actually get in the previous levels. To me that's stupid and doesn't make it a fun time for somebody who just wants to beat the game and not collect everything. But that's what I think this game does such a good job of, is making it a well designed balance between collecting and storytelling and to me makes that super easy to differentiate and also makes it easier like I said before for any casual gamer to actually get into this game and beat it instead of collecting everything that they need to getting to a certain level and then backtracking after they get a power up or something like that. Rayman does get some pretty cool upgrades in this game just like any platformer and most of the abilities you get are more like upgrades to help you shoot with your fists which are silver balls for some reason and the most iconic is Rayman's helicopter here which is precision platforming at its finest it's awesome and i'm very impressed how they were able to pull this off in a 3d game it's pretty cool i love how the other upgrades are basically upgrades you get from lee the fairy but i digress you get a purple lum which can make you hook shot to different lums and go to different places there's also a charge shot which is the charging fist which can allow you to have a more powerful attack and the amount of gold fists you have for that makes for the more powerful attack you also get the flying option i mentioned earlier where you go up and down in the sanctuary level but my goodness you lose it after the end of the level which is so dumb to me why did you do something stupid like that all in all i do have to say with the abilities in this game they aren't too complex which i think makes for a better balance it makes the new player make it so much easier for them to control and not give them more than a simplistic moveset. Sometimes simplicity can go in a long way, and I like that about this game. And since this is Rayman's first attempt into 3D gaming, I'm happy they also did this. Sometimes a more complex moveset can be super taxing to learn the new moves. Something like Banjo-Tooie, it was more of an extension on some of Banjo and Kazooie's moves, but for me, it got super confusing, especially towards the end, because I knew that they were kind of similar and named, and they were just different controls in general. There are some gimmicky things, but they only show up like three times in the game. The first being in the swamp. You basically get a launch onto the snake thing, and then move around. It's just basically how you control your tight speed and movements. 
And it's kind of hard to control at first, but it's pretty fun. And once you get the hang of it, it makes for an enjoyable experience and a fun time. The second thing are these rockets, which I mentioned earlier, is one that Rayman gets when he's flying and one that's on the ground. The ones that are flying, uh, the controls are kind of tankish and I'm not really a big fan of them, but they aren't too bad. The ones that I really like are the ones on the ground. Those are some of my favorite levels, like Men Are Hills and a couple of others to name a few. The least favorite and kind of one of the worst things about this game is when you go to the mine levels and you control this stupid ship thing. Jeez, man, this thing controls so badly. And not only the fact that you're in a tight, confined space just doesn't make things good. But all in all, there aren't too many gimmicks, but the gimmicks they have in the game present themselves aren't too bad, even though the one I mentioned earlier is pretty bad. There's one more I forgot to mention. You can take this barrel here and you can fly with it. It's kind of fun, but it, it's basically the same as the rocket that's flying in the air, minus the tank controls. Speaking of the controls, the control in Rayman 2 is fantastic and pretty simplistic and easy to understand. Something like the swimming controls are some of the best I've seen on the N64, and no joking, because sometimes controls can really suck in N64 games, especially in these platformers that we're trying to do. But Rayman 2, man, I love the swimming. It's too bad there's not too many swimming levels, just really the one with Carmen the Whale, but in aiming for getting air, it's just so easy to get and it's so easy to move on from level to level and it's so easy to move on from place to place with the tight controls that this game has but i also feel like the control does make it easier in terms of speed i feel like rayman has the perfect speed for not only the experienced player but also the casual player just trying to get into the game for one he moves at a good pace and it makes it so that it's not too taxing and too slow for an experienced player who's played the game before but it also kind of complements the people that have not played the game is it doesn't go too fast for them. And it's something that I really like. You can take the game at your own pace, so to speak. Graphically speaking, the game is really good actually for a Nintendo 64 game. I was super surprised. I get this game came out in 99, which is the at the end of life sort of game, but man, the environments along with the different models just look pretty stunning, especially Rayman's. I really like how he looks in this game. And the thing about this game is because I think of the N64 graphics, some of the characters look super funky, but I think it does the job well all in all. The music and sounds in this game are really good. This soundtrack is one of the most underrated soundtracks I've heard in any video game. The sounds in this game are perfect, from the fists to even some of the chain links that you use when you're actually opening up a cage getting a lump. Sorry I couldn't actually get the video to... I'm sorry I didn't actually have the sound for the videos here. I wish I could show more on the sound on this. But they are reused in Donald Duck Going Quackers, I think as I mentioned in my Donald Duck Going Quackers review. But the music also has one of the best themes I've heard in all of gaming. The Hall of Doors theme. My goodness. This just screams epicness and it also is on the start when you're trying to get ready to play the game. I love this game's soundtrack and gameplay. It is so good. So in conclusion, I really, really, really love this game. It is one of the best games I've ever played and it's one of the games that when I was a child I was really looking forward to on Christmas and I was super disappointed. There's actually a video of me being disappointed that I did not get this game under my tree. And I guess for good reason, but anyway, let's finish off this review, shall we? Rayman 2 for its video game series is kind of like the Ocarina of Time of its series of games. Yes, I get Rayman Origins and other Rayman games are awesome, but when it's just something like the swimming or little things in the gameplay, it just triumphs over other games gameplay in the series. And it also triumphs some of the gameplay in not just the Rayman series, but in other series in general. My really only issues are for the story, I feel like Rayman is relied way too much upon and I hate that stupid ship, it is so dumb. And also the fact that you have to use an N64 memory card. I didn't bring this up, but yeah, it's stupid. I hate the stupid N64 memory card, it sucks. However, if you don't want to play it on the N64, it's come out on a butt ton of other systems, but I feel like the N64 is the best way to go. Rayman 2 is such a good game, and it has a completely fun balance to the collectathon platformer and somebody who's just trying to beat a game and have a good time. Rayman 2 will go down in history, in my opinion, as one of the best platforming games of all time. Thank you so much for watching, folks, and I'll see you in the next episode.